Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Charlemagne, the guy we are, the Breakfast Club. Yes, indeed. We got a special guest in the building, the brother Mo McRae. Morning. Morning, morning. What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? How are you, my brother? Good, now, if you man. don't, if you don't know who Mo Mo is, you probably know the face. He was in NYPD Blue, Boston Public, uh, the District, Cold Case, The Guardian, The Shield, The Division, CSI, ER, uh, Cold Case, uh, Detroit, uh, The Defenders, uh, Sons of Anarchy, uh, Battle Creek, Murder in the First, Empire, Pitch, uh, Tales. Uh, Rebel, the flight attendant. He's is... an actor with a long resume. Yeah, he has a long saying. resume. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Played, played in a lot of cop shows, too. A lot of cop shows. <laughs> I knew you was going to say something about that. Was that you, you, do you want to be a cop growing up? or? Nah, you know, honestly, in the beginning of the cop shows, when I started acting, that was pretty much the only opportunity for young black actors. You know, yeah, be yeah. on a cop show getting interrogated. Did you do it or not? Yeah. So it kind of started off doing a lot of those, and then later ended up getting to play a cop and be a lawyer and all those things. But what opportunities were in the beginning. You know, it's so funny. I saw when they were announcing the NAACP Image Awards, I saw uh, the head of the NAACP. He was on with Method Man. He's on CBS this morning with Gail King. And he said something that people got a little upset about, but I understood what he was saying. He was like, Method Man got nominated for playing an attorney, not a criminal. So mm. do you feel like they cast black people in those roles, especially black men, on purpose? Uh, in the criminal roles? Yeah, yeah. I think... I said, oh, you, you hit me with the tough questions fresh out the gate. I mean, honestly, I think a lot of it was on purpose because it was telling stories that are taking place in certain environments, mm -hmm. and those are the people that inhabit those environments. And I also feel like it was important, like when Method is playing those type of roles, are we just seeing us depicted in other lights and other things? I remember my grandmother, it got to a point where I was doing all that stuff, those type of roles, and she said, baby, you smart, you so intelligent, you funny, you you all these things. Let's see some of that, too. Wow. And when she said that to me, it really made me pump the brakes on it. It was something I saw Chadwick had picked up on really early. Mm -hmm. He's spoken a lot about that, where he had to have a little bit more integrity in his work and be an un understanding of what these depictions mm -hmm. and what this representation, representation actually is. So, but those bills, though. Yeah, I was going to say, how difficult are... is that? Because <laughs> you got bills, and those it seemed like those are far and few. Yeah, the bills, it's, it's, it's a real thing. And now I think that's a struggle of every artist. It's like, how do you maintain that dream but still maintain a roof over your head? Mm. And I think that's something all the greats had to navigate and figure out, whether mm. it's music, it's playing ball, whatever it is. You got that big picture dream, but what do you do in the interim to keep yourself afloat? And so something I ended up doing, a lot of people didn't know, is like I started working with somebody doing landscaping and just figuring out other things. So you I cut grass do. and acted. I did whatever I had to do. And I also started to hone my craft mm -hmm. because that was the biggest issue when they were saying, oh, you can't play a lawyer. I was like, well, why can't I? It was like your diction. So I did speech and diction mm -hmm. training. I did all those things to eliminate the no. So I'm on a show like The Flight Attendant with Kaylee Cuoco. I'm a CIA agent on that show. And that's because I put that time into the craft to be able to convincingly convey those other careers and archetypes. Now, when did you know you wanted to be an actor? Like, when was that? Man, I'm want... from California. We can hear it all, all, all in your voice. You hear the Cali? Yeah, hear you hear it all the in Cali? Your voice. You know, it, it's, it's funny. Every time I've thought about, like, when I want to become an actor, I feel like it just keeps going further, further, further back in my life. But the first time I really made that decision, I got on stage in high school just doing a play, had a uh, drama teacher and just taking the class i didn't want to be an actor just end up in a class and he was like you got something special you should get on stage and at the time i'm like everybody i want to play ball i want to be a mm -hmm. rabbit i want to do all these other things he's like i'll give you an a in the class if you do one little play and i got on stage and that was it it was something about that connection with the audience and looking people in the eye and being expressive in that manner i was like this is what i want to do for the rest of my life and i was 16 years old when i found it I just had no idea how hard it was going to be. I thought it was just going to work, but it was crazy difficult. Now, do you see those programs a lot? Because you're from South Central? Yeah, South Central LA. Do you see those programs a lot in, in, in the hood, in, in those areas? Because I just remember growing up in, in Queens, I don't remember seeing those type of arts. And I don't know if Charlamagne, you've seen them in, in South Carolina. Of course, we had the basketball, the baseball, the football. I don't really see in that many. No, we had theater. I did, theater I did play. plays when I was in elementary school. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, stuff like Rock Soup. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, they have plays. Yeah, it, it's plays, and I, but I think those, like, specific programs, that's a good question, Envy, when you think about, like, outside of the school. Like, I didn't find any exposure to other arts when I was coming up. Like, my mom did a good job of making sure my brother and my sister, like, we would go to the museum sometimes, but in terms of, like, programs that I think that were really going to add 
intrinsic value to us mm -hmm. outside of like the norm that didn't exist when I was coming up. That's why I'm so happy. I've been looking into like what LeBron is doing with his school. Mm -hmm. like, it's a really powerful thing because he's trying to give these uh, at risk and these challenged youth opportunities to be exposed to more dynamic things that can really lead to fundamental growth. Cause I didn't have that really when I was growing up. And you from South Central. Yeah, what, set you claim? <laughs> what set you claim? What set you claim? All of them. I got love for all the sets. <laughs> all the sets. All how, the how sets. How did you avoid being, in, I guess, involved in, like, you know, gang activity growing up in the area like that? And especially for us, because that's all. Oh, when we hear South Central, that's the first that's, thing I we mean, hear. Yeah, I, mean, I could be wrong. Hear. I could be stereo, I could be typecasting, stereotyping, or whatever the word is. Yep. I could be doing that profiling. You know what I mean? I don't know South Central. All, that's what I think of when I think mm -hmm. South Central. Man, God is good, man. It was a mm -hmm. blessing that... I was able to be so close to the fire, but not really get burned. But mm -hmm. it's very real. Like I grew up in South Central during like the peak of, of gangs and crack. So I had a lot of friends that were in that lifestyle, but I was always that kid it was weird where opportunities would present itself for me to get out of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And that was probably the biggest thing that changed was like my, my grandmother. And then I had mentors that would take me out. And once I got out of that, like that two, three mile radius, and I started seeing like, oh damn, the the fruit and vegetables in this grocery store in this part of town look different. <laughs> the way they That's handle real. conflict mm -hmm. in this part of town is different. Like I remember seeing road rage incidents and people like, F you, F you. And they drive off. Where I grew up, F you, F you, somebody pulling out the strap. Somebody right. getting shot. Somebody getting shot that the night. The escalation, so it was a conflict resolution. All those other things I saw out of exposure I was like, ah, these are my friends, but I'm trying to go live this type of lifestyle. I don't want to. I don't want to be stuck in this, mm -hmm. and I want to be able to help my friends out of it. And the only way I can help them is if I get out myself. So that was the thing that kind of kept me away. Is I got that exposure to those other elements, and I found purpose. Mm -hmm. Which I think is you can't put enough value on that. Finding purpose is a big thing. So once I found that, I was just locked in. And you said your grandmother uh, encouraged you to, you know, do better roles right mm -hmm. and you you're writing uh and directing a lot of nothing yes so yes. this one of them ones when you were writing this did you have grandma in mind i had everybody in mind mm -hmm. man when i wrote this feast this uh a lot of nothing this film it, it's, it's super autobiographical in a lot of ways so i just pulled from my life like and researching and thinking about all the greats in art no matter what the discipline is the greatest thing you could do is pull from what you know so it's inspired by me, my first love, my close friends, my brother, and all the things that are happening in the world, like all these injustices and these travesties. And, mm -hmm. and so it was like, okay, how can I make a story with the things that I know and that we all experiencing that could still be funny and dangerous and thrilling? And that's what the movie is. So I was thinking about everybody when I wrote the film. I was mm -hmm. gonna ask you what your, your filmography and the amount of films and TV series and shows that you've been on First of all, how do you get so many acting jobs? Because there's a, a zillion one actors out there that don't get this many jobs. And two, is it easy to go in and out of character? Because, you know, one day you might play a cop. The next day you're playing this. The next day you're playing that. Like, mm -hmm. is it easy to get in and out of those characters? No, um, for me personally, I can only speak for myself. I would say it's not easy per se because I'm addicted to the, to the process mm -hmm. of work and investigation of what it takes to really honor and give truth to each character I inhabit. So it's not easy, but it's something that I love. It's like working out, like lifting weights. It's not easy, but the the process is important to get those gains. You know, you talk gotcha. gym talk, get those gains. So for me, it's just been about each character, how do I honor that and bring as much as myself to it to mm. make it truthful and authentic. And then that process of getting jobs, you know, for all the young actors out there coming up, <sighs> You just gotta, you gotta um, develop yourself. Mm -hmm. That was the greatest thing that's helped me get all the jobs. I put that time in developing myself, my vessel, my craft, and then putting myself in opportunities to showcase that. I like, I like a word you use. You said gains. I never thought about that. So how do you shred, right? Like when you do a role, when you're getting killed by police, like that's a lot emotionally. How do you mm -hmm. get rid of that? It's, 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 it's life outside of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like my family, like my family is such a huge part of it all. Like I come home, see my kids, my wife and all that. That's why I try to leave it, leave it at the, uh, at the door as best I can. But Denzel, it's funny. You just said something talking about shredding. I was fortunate enough when I was working on the Butler. So Lee Daniels, you know, he had a few people over to all working on the film and then Denzel shows up and I'm sitting there like, Oh shit, Denzel just walked in. And Denzel's like, man, you look familiar. I'm like, 
and they'll tell me I look familiar. It's crazy. I could just go home, call my grandmother right now. <laughs> but we end up having like this 45 minute conversation, him and I. I've never told this story really anybody publicly. And he was telling me how every time in his life when he wants to get to the next level, he sheds the fat. He wow. trims the fat. He's like, that's the key. He's like, right when I'm here and I'm feeling complacent, I look around and I trim the fat. And that could be from my body, that's my mind, that's the people around me, wow. I trim it. And he says something, he's like, you gotta look at it like a ladder. You trying to climb to the top of the ladder, you are gonna do it with some people on your back and hold some luggage and all that. So with a lot of my process is that, that trimming of the fat to be able to inhabit the roles. And then once the role is done, I gotta trim that fat that that put on me and move on to my next thing. That's what made real. you get behind the camera for, for, uh, for people that don't know, uh, I was in East New York, and you actually Let's go, Envy. Let's go. People know you on East New York. He trying to well, be humble. They might not recognize him. He got a nose job since I did oh, not got him. He on CBS made him get a nose <laughs> job. No, no that's true. <laughs> that's not true. That's not true. But you actually directed that episode. And mm -hmm. for people that don't know, it wasn't like, uh, at first, they, you know, they called and said, if I want this, I would have to try out for the part. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I had, to, I had to do it in front of you and, and the executives. Yes. So what made you first want to get behind the camera? And then I want you to tell people about... My, How uh, good you were? My audition, yeah. <laughs> well, first of all, shout out to my man, Harry O, Harry, who connected us, yep. man, like, which is an important thing in this whole process, too, is relationships and cultivating good relationships out of that reciprocity value of looking out for people that look out for you. But I wanted to get behind the camera because I'm an artist. You know, I'm not just an actor. I do photography. I write. I, I want to learn to draw one day, tell stories. And so I realized I just focused on my acting. I was kind of putting myself in a box. It's not anybody else was putting me in a box. I was putting myself in a box. Mm -hmm. I was limiting the scope of what I could do and how I could tell stories. So, and I was fascinated with it all. So I started studying, shadowing all the great directors I was able to work with, going to YouTube University, spending <laughs> tons of my own money as an actor that I was making to buy cameras and to make short films because I just wanted to tell stories. I wanted to give people the thing that like Spike Lee, John Singleton, the Coen brothers, uh, Steven Spielberg, the thing that those directors gave to me, those experiences, I wanted to give to other people. So I made my first film, started making all those shorts and doing East New York right now. Well, and how did you get East New York? Cause I mean, and did anybody know East New York was gonna be so big? Cause I mean, it's a show that people genuinely love. Man, the, uh, the show, I don't think you ever really know how big something is gonna be. Um, I end up getting East New York because oddly enough, this is how investing in yourself pays off. A lot of nothing, this feature film that I have coming out, it started as a short film. And I, I spent like 40 Gs on this short film at a time when I didn't really have the bread, but I was like, people are like, why are you spending so much money? Because mm -hmm. I need to show my vision. Mm -hmm. Cause everybody mm -hmm. always saying they want to do stuff. It's like, Mo, stick to what you do. And I'm like, I want to direct. They like to stick to what you do. So then I showed them the vision. They were like, oh, this is special. So the, the executive producer on East New York, Mike Robin, he saw my short film mm. like five years ago, something like that. He saw that short film and he was exact. This dude did NYPD Blue, all these big shows. He's a legend in TV. And so he had me direct a television show for him a couple years ago and I crushed it. A show called All Rise. And then when East New York came around, as soon as it got green lit, he was like, Mo, I need you to come and do this show. And so from him seeing my short film, and then what I did on this other show is what led him to calling me and giving me the opportunity to not only direct, but produce East New York. Now they also said, you know. Oh, you produce East New York as well? Yeah, I'm a producer on the show as well. Oh shit, let me hold something. Man, you got it, bro, you got it, you got it, you got it. <laughs> now, for, for, when they called for East New York, they said that at first you were looking for somebody else to play uh, the role, DJ Authentic. Yes. And, uh, and then I guess you, you decided to give me a shot. So what, what was that process? I never, I never knew. They just you told want me, me to tell you why I wanted to give you a shot. But the yeah. role said Dominican 45. <laughs> you did not say that. <laughs> no, right. that's no, what okay. no, you know, you know what it was like a big thing about me in art is authenticity, mm -hmm. right? And so you have this show that's set in New York and, and it's tapping into the culture, like the zeitgeist of people that want to see what's happening in New York right now. So we're talking to my guy, Harry O, it was just like, who are those people? 
that represent that, that yeah, are who's real. Who's the DJ that could be a snitch? Yo, shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> who's the DJ in New York that potentially yo, could be yo, a snitch? Shut up, go ahead, who's go ahead, so, yo, yo, who could bring that? Who could bring that energy? Who's that person that people are gonna see and be like, that's dope, but also, it has to be somebody that's gonna take it serious, which is why we had to do the read. And I'm gonna give you some, I'm gonna give you, talk about some real stuff right here, where a lot of people get opportunities to do things, but they bring too much ego to the party. They're pretense, they come with all that, so they're not willing to respect this. So it's people, you big in this world over here, you get an invitation to come over here and do something else, and you show up like, nah, I'm not gonna do this, I'm, I'm, I'm me. And what was amazing about, about Envy, about you, bro, is you came in with so much humility and reverence for what's happening in the film and TV world and was like, okay, whatever the process is, I respect it. And you did the work. You had your lines memorized, you had a point of view, you had a perspective. And as soon as I saw that, I'm like, oh, you're my guy. Mm -hmm. Forever. Next year, next year, he got a nose job now. Yeah, now he up, can't man. call him yeah, no more. Right. Right. Call you like like <laughs> no, but, that, but that was the most difficult part was the humility. Mm. Right, because I've been doing this for a long time. I've been DJing for a long time. I've been snitching for a long time. Yeah, I know up, how to snitch in New York. <laughs> so when somebody I know how to snitch. <laughs> so when, when somebody tell when you do something and somebody tells you that's not right, it makes you feel a way because really, yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't feel that way. If it made I, me feel a little because because I say you wouldn't feel that way. Like nah, I know I'm not an actor, so I would want that game. I would want but that's somebody what I want to tell me when I'm not. But, doing but that's what right. I, I overdid it. I'm like, tell me. Guide me. Tell me which way I should do it. How yeah, do you feel yeah. about this? How you feel about that? That's why, you know, with the episode, I'm like, you know, I was asking and I'm, I'm reading your lines while you're saying your lines. So I yeah. know when to come in my lines and I'm asking, do I say it like this? Am I supposed to be smooth? Am I supposed to be scared? You know what I mean? So you want to go through it. And then I had to do it. I had to audition in front of him. I had to audition in front of the executives. And it's like, you don't know how it is. So I, I, I always like appreciate that. the I opportunity. Think that's, that's part of scratching yourself, right? Like yes. when we talk about that, that ladder that Denzel was talking about, like some people get to a certain you know, level on the ladder and they think there's nowhere else to go. And it's exactly. like, cause you ain't looking up. <laughs> exactly, I mean? they get they get fat on that position. Word. So they can't go up. And when you get that much weight on you high, what happens? Gravity kicks That's in right. and you're gonna come down. That's right. So I think you gotta constantly be challenging yourself. Cause oftentimes I was talking to somebody about this recently, like people talk about the culture, the culture, mm -hmm. just do this for the culture. And I, I find myself right now wondering, are we really challenging? the culture are we stretching the culture are we are we like even something like the whole snitching thing right like why is snitching so bad why are we still treating snitching like it's a bad thing that's oh, something a question i will oh, uh, i don't because i'm not in the street mm -hmm. i could care less who's an informant or not you know what i mean but right. i also look at it as there is crime prevention i think the 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 the, mm -hmm. the code is if you're in the street and you're doing dirt and you know you're doing dirt with somebody and y'all did it together and then you snitch to save yourself and that person goes down. I can understand that if you live that life. But for people who are just want to keep the community safe, yeah, I don't absolutely. have a problem with that. Yeah, right? call the police. Call the police, please. <laughs> if you do don't, I will. Yeah, exactly. Do what you need to do. And then also challenge the systems that create such like lack and desperation where people are committing right. crimes to eat. Like, let's That's look right. at that. Mm -hmm. Don't talk to me about stop snitching. Let's stop the systems that create all this lack. And you know what's a real snitch to me? A real snitch to me is the person who told on Nat Turner. Yes. A real mm -hmm. snitch to me is the person, the other, the other enslaved person who told on Denmark Vesey and the slave revolt he was trying to put together. Yes. Like that's a snitch. Those Absolutely. are the ones that we should punish by death. Yeah, because you set us back. You that's told right. on Absolutely. the person that was trying to lift us up. That's why right. would you do that? That's right. Why why would you do that? That's right. But I also say I, I don't have a problem being a snitch. Like if you need me to come back and, and snitch on some more people, I don't have a problem. We, we know. Oh, okay. That's why you got the role. I'm just saying. Like, Crush this, 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 snitch I point, game I on 10. Yeah, it was him right there. It was him right there. So what's next for you? Because you, uh, you're doing more episodes of East New York. Yes. And of course you got a lot of nothing. So explain how many more episodes y'all start shooting yet or? So right now I'm um it's crazy. So I just finished directing episode 14. Mm -hmm. Episode 15 is filming right now and I'm prepping to direct episode 16. So as soon as I leave here, I'm going to go do like a location scout. Wow. The show was doing incredible. The it cast is. is phenomenal. Everybody's so cool. Everybody's so, so yeah, dope. He's legends. You yeah. got Jimmy Smith. You know, he's a legend. Mm -hmm. Like man, so me and Jimmy Smith, we did Sons of Anarchy together. Mm -hmm. And so it was weird when I was gonna have to come and direct somebody that I look up to, mm -hmm. which is like an interesting dynamic where I gotta go to Jimmy Smith's 
after he does a take and be like, oh, Jimmy, that was good, but can you try it like this next time? So that was like some of my own little kind of fears I had coming into mm -hmm. the situation with everybody down on that on that call sheet. Like these are all incredibly accomplished people. So that was, I'm doing that right now on the show and I'm just talking about the film because I think this movie, a lot of nothing, it's like, it's not like anything that's ever really been made. And what would you call it? Is it a horror? Is it it's a thriller? Like a, it's it... a satirical thriller. Mm. And it is the combination because it, it's equal parts funny and serious. It's it's uh it's scary and it's but it's dynamic, it's interesting. It's one of those films you can't see it without talking about it afterwards because the subject matter is real heavy. You got a a married couple who's watching the news one night and sees an unarmed motorist is killed by a police officer. And at the end of that news segment, they reveal the identity of the officer and it's their next door neighbor. Mm -hmm. So then they pose with that question because I always thought about it. Like we get all so upset when something go wrong. First thing we do is go to social media. Well, what happens if the problem's right next door? Mm -hmm. right. What would you do then? That's right. And then how do you handle that problem on top of all the problems you already got in your own relationship? Right. And that's what the film is. It's like all those things come together in a real crazy way. Right. And you got nominated uh, for NAACP Image Award. I did get Outstanding nominated. Outstanding Breakthrough I, Creative. Mm -hmm. how, did. how did that feel? Because that's directing, so that's different. Yeah, I mean, I get emotional just thinking about the journey, right? Because this whole thing about breakthrough, that specific word, that category, because my whole philosophy on life has been about not being in a box. Because I realized nobody could put me in a box. I put myself in a box. And as soon as I adopted, adapted that mentality and started living outside of that, these kind of things start to happen. So it's just been affirmation. It's, it's humbling. You know what I mean? It's an honor to be acknowledged for a breakthrough creative and motion picture. Mm -hmm. It's something that was so challenging to do. Like making a movie is hard, especially if you care about the details. And so to get that acknowledgement, I'm thankful for the cast and everybody involved to make that happen. It's just been beautiful. I like what you said just now because I, I, I think about that, right? Like, I think sometimes um, we listen to the world instead of listening to God. Oh, and so, yeah. And so a lot yeah. of times we do things because we that's what everybody is telling us we should do. Yeah. But what is God telling you to do? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody else might be like, oh, no, stay in your box. Stay in your lane. No, don't do anything else. But God is like, no, go direct. And that thing, like, and God speaks to me a lot through my wife. And so I, I, I remember- uh, You got a black wife? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just gotta make sure, brother. Why are you acting like that? What happened if you say no? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you say I after that? I just gotta if make no. sure. If he says no, what do you say after that? Thanks for seeing you, Mo. <laughs> oh. Thank, you, thank you for uh, going. <laughs> oh, man, out now. Jesus. Thank you. God, that, that, that's, a, that's a whole crazy thing. Cause like mm -hmm. the, the I, you love who you love, right? That's so true. I, some, of my, some of my friends that are like, that love black people and deeply. But well, black love is revolutionary. Yeah, and, then they, and then they got white wives. And Ooh. I feel like, for me personally, having those close relationships, I respect the fact that they were true to their heart. Yes. That who they love personally and romantically has nothing to do to diminish all the people that, of color that they care about as well. But yeah, my wife is black. She's beautiful. She a movie star. She's in my movie. Yep. Like Scott Davis, shout out to my wife. Word. You had to pay her? Um, what, Jay? You had to pay her? That way? You had to pay her? I, yeah, yeah, I had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm sorry. laughs> you had to pay as you no, no, but Union minimum or you know, no, no, pay, just pay in love. You know, we, we got a little, we got a little arrangement. Yeah, I don't want, I almost sad to find out nothing like that. Here, yeah, yeah. Take care of you, baby. Don't worry, I got it, I got it. Um, no, but the listening to God thing is, is so crazy because the hardest part about listening to God is that only you know what He's telling you to do. And so everybody around you has a perception or an idea of what they think you should be doing. Mm. And you can't let that combat the reality of what God wants you to do. Right. So people think, oh, Mo, you got this. You should be doing that. You can make money. You can do this. You, I'm like, nah, God want me to do something else. And that's hard because people don't understand. They don't understand the way I move because I move. I'm led by something different. Like you don't come from where I came from, the way I came from and get to the, to these type of moments to be able to share the story without being led by something different. So what you said, that's, that's my whole life, man. I go where my spirit tell me to go. I do it. It could change as long as my, my wife, my kids, uh, my motivation, my inspiration, they good. And I'm telling the truth in my work. I don't, I don't care what anybody else got to say. That's really yeah. have it. Well, we appreciate you for joining us. And where can they check out a lot of nothing? Are we in theaters on uh, February 3rd, 2323? Two, three, two, three. So is that Jordan, Jordan? Ooh. So we New York, LA, mm -hmm. all the big cities. I'm, I'm hoping to do some um, 
show up at some of the theaters with mm-hmm. some of the, the cast is crazy. Let me just say Alana Noel, Cleopatra Coleman, Shamir Anderson, Justin Hartley, Lex Scott Davis. The cast is incredible. We're going to be everywhere mm-hmm. showing up. But yeah, some theaters are going to be on demand as well. So if you don't want to go see it in the theater, which I advise you to do, because it's a movie you want to see on a big screen. Just the filmmaking is incredible in terms of like everybody that came together. Like I got geniuses that came and donated and gave love to help make this movie. So it's theaters on demand and East New York is on CBS, mm-hmm. uh, 930 and all that. Let us, know Sunday, to, uh, Sunday night. let us know how to buy a, get a theater for a lot of nothing. Let us know it and we'll get a theater. Uh, I'm on screen. Yep. Yo, oh, definitely for sure. That, I mean, that mean a lot. 100%. Yeah. Let's, it, do it. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it opening weekend. Maybe Sunday night. Okay. Yeah, Sunday let's do it. night opening weekend. Yeah, I'll be back. Let's do it. Uh, I appreciate that. No, for done. Real. Let's do it. All right. Well, it's Mo McRae. Mo, look, she yeah. did it. <laughs> I'm acting. I'm acting. You if you need me, if you need me, she did it. What's up? Oh man! <laughs> All she got to do is point back and say, "No, he did it." She's a white woman. They're going to listen to her. <laughs> You're going to jail. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! Yeah. And before, and before I get out of here, let me let y'all know what y'all are doing is so important and meaningful, man. And I know it's a lot of laughs and jokes, but what y'all create and what you guys provide here is so important because so many people would not be acknowledged and recognized if not for y'all oh, doing man, what you, you do in the way that you do it. So it's an honor for me to be here and it's all love. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Well, it's the Breakfast Club. Yes. It's Mo. 